Hi everyone, I am Dr. Vaseem Sajjad. I am a Diagnostic and Interventional Radiologist. As we know, in the previous lecture, we discussed about normal breast imaging. Now, we will learn about mammography, which is one of the most commonly used breast imaging modality. But in this lecture, our focus will be mammography positioning. Which mammographic positions are used, when these positions are used, and how these views are obtained. Now let's have diagrammatic explanation of these mammographic views and mammographic positioning. But before that, I would like to request you to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get the notifications of upcoming lectures. During mammography, four factors are very important. Exposure, compression, position of the breast, and mammographic views. First of all, we we'll talk about the exposure. The goal of the exposure is that all glandular tissue must be penetrated adequately and we achieve this by placing the photocell at densest portion of the tissue. We also keep the peak kilo voltage lower to get better contrast and we also keep the exposure less than 200 milliampere second to minimize the blur. The next thing is compression. Adequate compression is very important to achieve optimal mammographic images. Adequate compression prevents motion and the goal of the compression is at least the breast should be taut but it should not be painful for the patient. And the next goal of the compression is that it reduces the radiation dose needed to get mammographic images. To minimize the pain uh, for the patient, uh, the compression should be applied gradually if the compression is applied gradually, the pain will be minimum and it will be less painful during the first half of the menstrual cycle. So the next factor is positioning of the breast. To understand the positioning of the breast, we need to understand the concept of perimeter of the breast, pectoralis muscle and posterior nipple line. The goal of mammography positioning is to bring the breast back to its normal anatomical position and to maximize visualization of the breast tissue and to avoid superimposition of the structures. Uh, so now we talk about the perimeter of the breast. In perimeter we need to define the medial side of the breast, the lateral side of the breast, the superior side of the breast, the inferior side of the breast and this border is the extension of the superior side of the breast. So the next is posterior nipple line. Posterior nipple line is the line which joins the nipple to the pectoralis major muscle and in both views MLO and craniocardial we draw a posterior nipple line and this is the posterior nipple line in MLO view and this is the posterior nipple line in the craniocardial view. During mammography, we elevate the breast so that the posterior nipple line is as close as possible and perpendicular to the chest wall. So the next uh, thing is about pectoralis muscle. Uh, we talk about its length, width and shape of the pectoralis muscle. In ideal mammographic images, the pectoralis muscle should at least reach up to the posterior nipple line. If the pectoralis muscle is not reaching up to the posterior nipple line that it means that we are missing some part of the breast and this image is not adequate. And this outer border of the pectoralis muscle should be convex and convex or straight and it should not be concave. So for positioning of the breast the posterior nipple line depth on craniocaudal image and the posterior nipple line depth on MLO image should almost be same and the difference between these two lengths should not be more than 1 cm. The fat should be posterior to the parenchyma in both images. Inferior extent of the pectoralis muscle is at least at the level of the posterior nipple line on MLO view. Margin of the pectoral muscle should be convex towards the nipple and inferior memory fold should be elevated. No overlap between bottom of the breast and upper abdomen. For craniocardial view, the nipple should be in midline and for MLO view, the nipple should be in profile. No other body part should be projecting onto the breast in the mammographic image. 
so these are the factors which should be present in every mammographic image if these factors are present in any mammographic image we say that the image is adequate now we summarize these factors for adequate mammographic image the pectoral the pectoral muscle should reach at least up to the posterior nipple line on the mlo view the nipple should be in center in craniocardial view and it should be in profile in the mlo view the next very important factor is the inferior memory fold inferior memory fold is basically the combination of two folds the horizontal fold and the vertical fold the horizontal fold is the part of the medial breast and the vertical fold is the part of the lateral breast so in mlo views the inferior memory fold should be visible and it should not be overlapping now let's summarize the factors which should be present in breast views and if these factors are present we categorize these views ideal or optimal in craniocardial view all the breast tissue should be imaged medial border should be well demonstrated nipple should be in profile our skin edge seen transecting the nipple nipple in midline of imaged breast and posterior nipple line within 1 cm of posterior nipple line on mlo view in mlo views all breast should be imaged pectoral muscle shadow to nipple level full width of the pectoral muscle nipple in profile our skin edge seen transecting the nipple inferior memory angle well demonstrated and posterior nipple line within 1 cm of posterior nipple line on craniocaudal view if these factors are present on craniocaudal and mediolateral oblique views then we categorize or we label the views as adequate now let's talk about different mammographic views there are two basic mammographic views mlo view and the craniocaudal view all other views are manipulation of these two basic views so first we understand mlo view mlo view is mediolateral oblique view the detector is on the lateral side of the breast and x-ray tube is on the medial side of the breast and we give angulation to the x-ray tube and the detector system in such a way that the upper outer quadrant of the breast is properly visualized if we don't give proper angulation then upper outer quadrant of the breast is not properly visualized and statistically most breast cancers occur in the upper outer quadrant so we miss the important lesions so the next view is mediolateral oblique view for axillary tail this is basically the modification of the standard mlo view in this view we focus on the axillary tail of the breast the rest of the x-ray tube and detector system position is the same then there is lateral medial oblique view it is just the reversal of mlo view in lateral medial view the detector is on the medial side of the breast and the x-ray tube is on the lateral side of the breast and similarly there is angulation and this angulation in LMO view and MLO view both is about 40 degree to 60 degree depending upon the patient habitus then there is an other suprolateral to inframedial oblique view in this view the image detector is on the inframedial side of the breast and x-ray tube is on the suprolateral side of the breast then there are lateromedial and mediolateral views in mediolateral view the image detector is on the lateral side of the breast and in lateral medial view the image detector is on the medial side of the breast in both these views the important point is that we place the image receptor not on the mid sternal line if we place the mid sternal line then the deep medial breast tissue on the side we are imaging is lost so to avoid this mistake we place the image receptor in such a way that it is pressing the contralateral breast if it is pressing the contralateral breast then the posterior part of the breast is properly visualized and posterior medial aspect is not lost in the image we obtain then the second 
standard view is craniocaudal view and we will understand craniocaudal view and different manipulations of craniocaudal view in craniocaudal view the image receptor is on the caudal end of the breast and x-ray tube on the cranial end then this is the cardiocranial view in cardiocranial view the image receptor is on the cranial end of the breast and the x-ray tube on the caudal end of the breast then there is laterally exaggerated craniocaudal view it is basically used to image the lateral side of the breast if the breast tissue is too large then we need this view in this view we place the image detector and the x-ray tube system on the lateral side of the breast so that the lateral part of the breast is properly visualized at the expense of the medial side of the view and this is the diagrammatic representation of the exaggerated craniocaudal view so just like exaggerated craniocaudal view there is medially exaggerated craniocaudal view in medially exaggerated craniocaudal view we focus on the medial side of the breast and the image detector and the x-ray tube system are placed on the medial side of the breast we focus on the medial side of the breast at the expense of the lateral side of the breast now the next view is craniocaudal view with rolled lateral this is the same as craniocaudal view but we roll the breast towards the lateral side when we roll the breast towards the lateral side the lesions in the medial side of the breast become our focus and we are focusing on the medial side of the breast similarly craniocaudal view with rolled medial side is just the reversal of the previous view in this view we roll the breast towards the medial side so that the lateral part of the breast is more properly visualized the next is cleavage view cleavage view is the same as craniocaudal view but we place the image receptor and the x-ray tube at the medial ends of both breasts so that medial ends of both breasts are properly visualized so the next view is the tangential view tangential view is used to visualize the intracutaneous are dermal lesions if there are intracutaneous or dermal lesions then the lesions are not visualized properly on the cutaneous part in different views we see that these lesions mimic that they are present within the breast parenchyma but actually they are present in the intracutaneous part of the view to solve this problem we take the tangential view in tangential view we throw the x-rays on the intracutaneous part of the lesion in such a way the direction of the x-rays is tangential to the lesion the last view is for those breasts which are having breast implants so to properly visualize those breasts which are having breast implants we perform eckland maneuver in eckland maneuver we push the implant towards the posterior side and the breast parenchyma anteriorly and then apply the compression so that the breast parenchyma is properly visualized and the breast implant is moved posteriorly i hope this lecture helped you to understand mammography positioning different mammographic views how these mammographic views are obtained and we also understood that by viewing the mammographic image how we can tell that this is a accurate accurate or right mammographic image